Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be deriving the equation for the mass flow rate through a nozzle. This will work for both converging nozzles and converging diverging nozzles, but it will only work if the flow is choked. The mass flow rate equation that we derive will be a function of the stagnation pressure, stagnation temperature, area at the throat or the minimum area, uh, ratio of specific heat, and the specific gas constant. Over here I've drawn a schematic of a CD nozzle where we can say that this is sort of the uh, combustion chamber or the reservoir where we can assume the conditions are the stagnation pressure and the stagnation temperature. And and then here at the minimum area, we have A star. The expression that we're gonna derive is actually pretty cool because these are some variables that you can find pretty easily for a lot of different engines online, such as the space shuttle main engine or the uh, F1 rocket engine. And so you'll usually find this, the reservoir stagnation pressure, stagnation temperature, and the throat area. And so you can plug these into the equation that we're gonna derive, and you'll easily be able to get a mass flow rate through the nozzle or through the engine that actually makes uh, a lot of sense. Now I mentioned that this works for choke flow, and so when the flow is choked, we know that the mass flow rate can be written as this. M dot is equal to rho star u star a star. That's the density, static density at the throat, the velocity at the throat, and then the throat area. And we know that since the flow is choked, the Mach number is equal to one at the throat. And so we can say that u star is equal to a star, which is where this is the local speed of sound. And a star we can write as gamma r, or square root of gamma r t star, where t star is the static temperature at the throat. And if we plug this in to here, then we can write m dot is equal to rho star times the square root of gamma r t star times a star. So here's the mass flow rate equation from the previous whiteboard, and we can see that it's a function of rho star, t star, a star, gamma, and r. And so you'll note that from the previous whiteboard as well, that a star, gamma, and r are in our final functional form, but rho star and t star are not. We want this as a function of p naught and t naught. I wanna make a quick note on these three parameters here. First, for gamma and r, these are properties of the gas. And then for a star, uh, we will almost always know AE over A star for a particular engine because this is just the area ratio of the nozzle. So it's the ratio of the uh, exit area of the nozzle over the throat area of the nozzle. And so for example, for, for the F1 rocket engine that powered the Saturn V, AE over A star is equal to 16. And if we know the exit diameter, which you can see online, then you can solve for uh, A star pretty easily. Now, if you recall from my sonic state video, we can write expressions for rho star over rho naught, T star over T naught, and P star over P naught. And these are all a function of only gamma because at the star state, the Mach number is equal to one, which cancels that out of the functional form. And so you can actually write rho star is a function of rho naught and gamma, t star is a function of t naught and gamma, and p star is a function of p naught and gamma. And we're trying to get rid of these rho star and t star and, and plug it in for p naught and t naught. So I've rewritten the equation again up here and we're trying to get uh, the rho star and the t star into the p naught and t naught. And so the way that we can do this is by multiplying by rho naught over rho naught and in here t naught over t naught is the same as multiplying by one and one is the same thing. And so we can take rho star over rho naught out and just kind of rearrange this. So we have rho star over rho naught and that leaves the numerator rho naught here. And then in here we can take the t star over t naught and group that together and that leaves the numerator t naught and then we have the a star. Now in this form here that we've just rewritten and you can note from the previous whiteboard that we have the rho star over rho naught, which we know is a function only of gamma. We know that uh, t star over t naught is also only a function of gamma. And we know that we can write rho naught as a function of t naught and p naught from the ideal gas law. So from the ideal gas law over here, we can see that p naught is equal to rho naught r t naught. We just rearrange for rho naught to get rho naught is equal to p naught over r t naught. And so we can plug that in to here to get this expression, m dot is equal to this rho star over rho naught, and then p naught over r t naught, and then instead of having the square root, I've just taken that same term just to the one half, it'll be easier for later, and then we still have the a star expression. And so the next step now is just to plug in expressions for this and for this, and then simplify the equation down. Now recall we need the expressions for rho star over rho naught and t star over t naught, so for my sonic state video, we have rho, uh, rho star over rho naught is equal to gamma plus one over two to the negative one over gamma minus one, and we can just flip the term in here, and then that gets rid of the negative, so we get two over gamma plus one to the one over gamma gamma minus one. T star over T naught is equal to gamma plus one over two to the negative one. And again, we can just flip the numerator and denominator here to get two over gamma plus one. And so we can plug this and this in for the rho star over rho naught and T star over T naught. And we get M dot is equal to, this is rho star over rho naught. This is from the ideal gas law, the, the rho naught term. Uh, this is from before. This is the uh, T star over T naught. And then the rest is the same. And so you can see that we can 
take this term out of this, because this is a, all in a square root, but we could just take this term out, uh, but keep the, uh, the one half. And so I'm just taking this to the one half and just shifting it over here. Uh, and that's what this is here. So we have the uh, row star of a row not term. This is the uh, T star of a T not term, just taken out of this gigantic one half. And then we have this is still here. And then this the rest of the term is still in here and a star is still here. And now you can see that this, these two terms here both have the same term inside of the brackets. And so you can see it has the form a to the b times a to the c. And we know that that is equal to a to the b plus c. So let's evaluate what b plus c is. b is one over gamma minus one, that's here. C is one half, that's here. We need a common denominator. So I multiply this by two over two, so I get two over two times gamma minus one. I multiply this by gamma minus one over gamma minus one to get gamma minus one over two times gamma minus one. We can combine the numerator because we have the same common denominator. So I get two plus gamma minus one, that's here, all over two uh, times gamma minus one. And two plus gamma minus one is equal to gamma plus one. So our final exponent is gamma plus one over two times gamma minus one. And I'm going to combine these two terms and put them uh, to this exponent. So I've just replaced that term up here in this expression and then kept this the same. And now let's take a look at this full expression here, we'll bring it over here. And so I'm just taking P naught times A star out here, and then I'm gonna move the R and the T naught into the square root, which means I'm just going to square them both to bring them in there. They're still in the denominator, so we get the gamma R T naught in the numerator over R squared T naught squared, all of the one half. We have this stays the same, and in here you can see that we have gamma, and then in here the R's cancel, so I get one over R. The T naught's cancel, so I get one over T naught, still to the one half. And what you'll see, uh, just for future convenience for the expression, just in terms of what you see in the textbooks, I'm gonna pull the T naught out. And so we get P naught A star over radical T naught. And then in here, we're left with gamma over R to the one half here. And so now we can plug this in for this full expression. And we get M dot is equal to this here, which is the same as from before. And then this expression here is from this here. And we're going to use, to get the final form, we're gonna use the A to the B to the C is equal to A to the b times c. Uh, and I'm gonna do that to pull this term into the square root because you can see here we have a power of gamma plus one over two times gamma minus one. You can see that the one half, that means that we can pull it into this one half but keep the gamma plus one over gamma minus one exponent. And so I'm gonna take this inside and that's what you see over here. So I'm gonna keep the p naught a star over radical t naught. That's the first term here. And then we have uh, in these brackets gamma over r, that's still the same. And then we have the two over gamma plus one to the gamma plus one over gamma minus one, this term all to the one half. And this is the final uh, form of the mass flow rate through a choked converging or converging diverging nozzle. So here are just some final notes about this final form of the mass flow rate equation. The first is that we can increase the mass flow rate by increasing the stagnation pressure in the reservoir. This is sort of weird because if you watch some of my other videos, I had said that when we pull down the back pressure, that is the pressure that the nozzle is exhausting into, then once we get to the choke condition, we can no longer get any more mass flow rate through the engine but you can get a higher mass flow rate if you increase the reservoir pressure as opposed to dropping down the back pressure. The second point is that you can increase the mass flow rate through the nozzle by increasing A star, which is the throat area when the flow is choked. You can still compute the M dot if the flow is not choked uh, with the A star. However, A star is not actually the uh, minimum area in the nozzle at that point, and you get an M dot that doesn't isn't really useful. And lastly, we can increase the mass flow rate through the engine by decreasing the stagnation temperature in the reservoir. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this uh, equation is extremely useful uh, and can predict some pretty good mass flow rates for these nozzles. And I'll be looking at uh, some of these predictions in subsequent videos. Thanks for watching.